Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Sit down and let's start. We beg you. Hey, Azu. We would like to start the program with an opening prayer. Al Haji Abdul Rahman, Zongo Kwas Coordinator, Zebula Constituency, please come forward. Al Haji Abdul Rahman, the Zongo Kwas Coordinator for Zebula. Okay. So we take the opening prayer from Mr. Vincent Akparbila, the pastor. Please let us all be in a mood of prayer. Please, we are praying. And so, Lord, we thank you this morning for the opportunity given to us gathered like this as your children. We are most grateful unto you, Father, for the life you have bestowed on us and for the life of His Excellency John Dramani Mahama and his entourage in the Zebula constituency. We pray that all that we shall discuss here shall be full. Around the day, glory and honor we shall give unto you. This and many things we ask. Through Christ our Lord, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Thank you very much, Pastor. Hey, Yesu. Hey, Yesu. Hey. Hey. We don't have much time, so we'll be brief with the introduction. Hey, Yesu. We have our own father and sitting MP for this constituency, Honorable Cletus Apul. Afwaka with us here this morning. Ayazu, we also have the constituency chairman, our only and only chairman, Chairman Akudugu, also with us here this morning. We have our father, the regional chairman, chairman 14 out of 15, and soon to be chairman 15 out of 15, chairman Alhaji Mumuni Bolnaba. Ayesu, because we are pressed for time, I plead with the other dignitaries as I have been instructed that we continue with the Ayesu. At this point, I would like to invite the constituency chairman to come and give us the welcome address. Ayesu, please. Ayesu, Ayesu. NDC NDC Layeta Layeta uh, Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity His Excellency the former president and incoming president John Dramani Mahama and the entourage Regional and National Constituency, our MP Honorable Cletus Apul Avok, the ever hard working constituency and branch executives, cadres, ladies and gentlemen, all protocol duly observed. May I create your indulgence to welcome the Messiah and the Savior of our country, Ghana. In the person of His Excellency John Dramani Mahama to the Zebila Constituency. Your Excellency.
Excellency, Zibila Kwensuensi is one of the largest in the district, sorry, in the region, and that gave one of the best results in the 2020 election. I think we were first in the region. The constituency has a total voter population of about 68,000 and a delegate strength of 1,277. Your Excellency, I want to create uh, to assure you that come May 13, 2023, we shall give you a hundred percent endorsement. We we shall also work hard to retain the seat and also increase uh, the voters' percentage, which we had. 68% in 2020, we shall increase it to about 85%. Your Excellency, may I at this point just make an appeal. The Zebila constituency is very, very, very large in terms of geographical uh, dispersion and heavily dense in terms of population. I therefore want to create your indulgence that come January 2025, when you resume office, you may consider creating a constituency for us. We also want to make an appeal that the constituency will be happy if we can enjoy your presidency with some appointments into your administration. Your Excellency, it is my hope and the hope of Ghanaians that come December 7th, 2024, you are going to receive a massive endorsement so that you will come and save Ayazu so that you will come and save Mother Ghana from the mess that has been caused by the, the super incompetent Nana Akufuado and, uh, and Dr. Bawumlaya in our country. On this note, I want to welcome you to the Zebula constituency, uh, the Kusak Tunde district. You are most welcome. Hey! Hey! Hey, Ezu! Hey, Ezu! Uh, thank you, Chairman Nakuduatia, for that wonderful uh, speech. On this note, I want to invite one very important person. And when I say very important, he's a man who is down to earth. He's a man who is hard working. He's been the father of this constituency for years. I have grown to love him for one thing, and that is his hard work and commitment to his constituents. On this note, ladies and gentlemen, join me with a hand of applause. Let's welcome Honorable Cletus Apul Avoka as he addresses us. Your Excellency, the former president and uh, our presumptive leader and president in waiting, uh, the constituency chairman, and the executives of the constituency, regional chairman and regional executives of the constituency. The de Lanyata, Lanyata, So Lembe, 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 So So For um, Your Excellency, let me take this opportunity to introduce a few of my colleagues and dignitaries on the high table with His Excellency the President. Of course, this is our women's organizer. Hashimatu Sinori Bukari Ayaza Ayaza Then, 
on her right, the gentleman in the red or pink shirt, is a very, very good key member of this party. Julius Debra, former chief of staff. Julius Debra, he's chief of staff. Of course, the regional chairman has been introduced to you and others. Then, the last person on the right, extreme right, Fair Khaled, is Professor Jusha Alabi, the campaign manager. Yeah. Professor Jusha Alabi. Then, coming back here again, my very good friend. We used to be directors of Accra Great Olympics, me and him, when he was there. He was the manager of Olymp uh, Great Olympics, chief executive officer of Great Olympics. He was formerly chairman of Greater Accra Region, NDC chairman, Greater Accra Region, Mr. Adekoka. <laughs> For then you have engineer Sadu Moses Asaga, Oro Moses Asaga. He's an engineer, he's a businessman, he's everything. <laughs> Moses. Former MP for Nabdam, Nangodi. Then Ambassador John Akologo Atia. John Tia was former MP of Talisi. And then Ghana's ambassador to Cuba. Former ambassador to Cuba. John Tia. Then, of course, you have the famous man. He can make and make. Somebody in NDC who can make and then make. He's no other fellow but our vice vice chairman and Azoka, Mr. Azoka of Northern Region. Azoka. After him, if you want my guy who scores himself own goals, the proponent is there. Honorable Isaac Adongo, Bulgar Central Constituency. Isaac Adongo. After him, you have lawyer Dr. Ayini, Bulga East constituency, and former Deputy Attorney General and Deputy Minister of Justice. Then you have my junior brother and colleague, the MP for Garu, Albert Alazuga Akoka, Albert. Um, your Excellency, our former president and presumptive flag bearer. Uh, I please. Those there, keep quiet. Yes, sir. Today, today His Excellency John Draman Mahama is here with us. And let me make this public statement. I've made it before. There are seven fine young men sitting in front of us, Your Excellency. No, 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 no. Oh, yeah, where is he? Oh, all right, yeah. Yes, I have decided to step down as the MP for Zebula come December 2024. I have decided. You are all aware that I contested all the eight elections in the fourth republic, one or the four, uh, the eight primaries, and defaulted in two parliamentary elections. This is my sixth term in parliament. And uh, Your Excellency, I hold a record in parliament. As somebody who has lost election twice and still won and come back to parliament, nobody has that record. I owe that to the good people of Zebila to the good people of Zebila who have made me and the party what we are today. So, there are seven young men who have decided that now that I'm stepping down, they can follow my footsteps. Give me the opportunity to introduce them briefly so that we can then go ahead. The first amongst them is our former district chief executive. Uh, in between 2013 and 2017, he was the DC for Boko West District. He's in the place of Simon Ayane Akongo. After him, it's a young lawyer, 
is a very young legal practitioner in Accra. He is Maxwell Abambila. He is sitting in Africa. Lawyer Maxwell Abambila. The third fellow is somebody who is project minded. He is working with the Anglican Church in Bolgatanga and he is a project manager for their projects. He is in the person of Ebenezer Ndebila Alumre. We have a fourth candidate. Indeed, he used to run errors for me when I was interior minister and when I was majority leader. He's in the person, he's a businessman and an occasionist. He's in the person of Ben Azuma Aloko Ben. After Ben Azuma is a young intellectual, Dr. Simon Teno, Dr. Simon Aseno. Dr. Simon Aseno. Then, who are the answer? Oh. Yes. Uh, you know, late John Ndebu has left an offspring. He's, he's the youngest son of late Honorable John Ndebu. He's in the person of Nelson Ndeba Ndebu. He's one of the candidates. We have another young man, a young lawyer too. His father was the first MP for this place from 1951 to 1966. And then first regional commissioner for the upper region, uh, Asunda, late Asunda. It is his son. He's called Abukura Asunda. Abukule. Where's Abukura? Abukura. Uh, yeah, he hasn't, he hasn't arrived yet. Lenyeta. Lenyeta. Have we said that your Excellency? We have 138 branches. 138 is a larger constituency in terms of size, like my constituency chairman said. 2020 elections, we won 130 branches, only eight that we lost to the MPP. I am confident that in 2024, we will even improve of these 130 branches. But our best results here in 1992 was in 2020, and I'm confident that with these young men, after the primary, if we bring them together and work hard, we can get more than the 130 branches that we got in 2020. <laughs> now, now, ladies and gentlemen, today is the turn of His Excellency John Mani Mahama. Who is he? We all know. Very humble, very affable, down to earth, very intelligent, very knowledgeable. Lanyeta, Lanyeta. Honorable John Mahama, his excellent John Mahama doesn't love position, for, for positions. People love it for him. And I will explain that very shortly. We were together in parliament. He joined me in parliament in 1997. It didn't take long before President Mills discovered that, in fact, Rollins discovered that this is a good material and made him minister for communications, information and communications. So we were both in cabinet under Rollins. Then in 2000, we lost the election, but we were both in parliament, sitting together like this, in parliament, as minority MPs, in 2001 and 2004. Yeah. Then, uh, in 2000, we were looking for a, a presidential candidate, for Mills was there. Then he chose Martin Amiru to partner with him. We didn't make it. In 2004, Honorable Mohamed Mumuni was taken to partner Mills. We didn't make it. Then in 2008, when we around the whole country that President means if you want the NDC to win, you want to win the president and NDC to win, go and look for John Mahana and make him your partner. In 2008, he didn't know about it. He didn't love him for it. People recognize his potential, his energy, his knowledge, and everything. So President Mills had no difficulty in choosing John Mahama as his running mate. And we made it in 2008. He made us make it. Shortly after that, we lost President Mills and he took over and we went. This is to 2024 is our turn. It is our turn. It's our victory year. It is his victory year. He wants to win and save Ghana before he hands over. 
That's right. So, ladies and gentlemen, without much ado, it is my greatest pleasure and honor to introduce to you His Excellency John Ramani Mahama as our presidential flag bearer. Thank you very much. Um, before I proceed, I want to acknowledge these media houses for covering this program live at no cost. Um, Dreams FM in Morga and also um, Zeps FM in Zebila constituency. Um, at this point, I want to invite the father of the region, my own father, Chairman Budoza, uh, Chairman 1515 to be, to come and uh, introduce the presumptive flag bearer for us. Chairman, you are welcome to the podium. Ayezu! Ayezuzu! NDC! Nori Yinne! Suru de Malak! NDC! Suru de Malak! Fa'nea tuwa 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 Eh, zina piada ane jinga Eh, yo, the the former president John Ramani Mama Obe Ligin Kwele Sinara Kayele NDC Lim Ghana Lim in Isu Yoli Yimba Jin and Dien Namla Kati Tul Kan Katebe Le Purunla Kati Yuturu La Purun Din Kwele Okusina Ankara Kayele Tanambana Bekwala Kina Ye Enama O Mengena Ruona and Kina Nyea Kano Komenga Tisia Kayele Malam Suru, Kadu Ngos, Kavuakana Yitla, that's from Pina Tarar. Ka vote, Kazabil Kwala, Ka vote by Yene Payano Yudre. For me, Nishiva Ayi, Yina Yabaman Yaranamla, Kaiba Yaranamla, by Yiniba Palaman, Kakaiba Yaranamla, by Yiniba Palaman Lea, Sora Tamal mistake, Kayele Uyunoko vote Yene. In Tisba, Yika on Miba, Beso on Zua on Zua Samba, Be on Sidao, Kalinda, Kanoko vote Lausa, and this your Excellency John Raman and Mahamba, hundred percent. Kalibigs, Kalibigs and these MP Primla, Yale, the TV, the Canadian Namla, the TV, the TV, the Canadian Namla, the TV, the Canadian Namla, the Canadian Namla, the Canadian Namla, the Canadian I vote by Yene Piana Yula, Baming Nabangele, Seba Han over Tistanam, Kakayele Balazini in Namla. So, Mampiada Anaginga, Yampusia Barca, Dake, Kalinda Kanda, the Kal Vodla, Kavod by Yene, Yanga Yulu Kinsia, Ben Medele Ayazu, Mayum Yelbusia, Tete Bullet to Samla, Huina, Omor Piasia Bela, Ultisia, Yasoka Lento Sagatun. King Bondo, Nebok, Negarunam, Ne Tempanam, Canada Lam Conjune, So Rina Zuglea, Nasosia, Kabul de Samla, Yaso Kuina, No Omor Silvia Tisia, Your Excellency, John Ramani Mama, I I want to invite you to come and talk to your delegates and then they will listen, they will listen to you. If you don't win it, Thank you very much. Ezu, Eza, Ehejo, Ehejo, Emefa, Mia, 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 Hey, Hey, Hey.
Thank you very much. Mr. DJ, you cut the music too early. I was enjoying the, my, 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 my elder brother's boogie. <laughs> Thank you very much. Tuma, Tuma. <laughs> okay. Um, I won't talk for long. I think that we all know why we've gathered here. NDC has become very attractive. And so we're attracting a lot of young people, youthful people into the party. And so when my brother, Efu Fever, my redeemer, Levet Cletus, was introducing these young people, you can see that they all have pedigree and they all qualify to represent Zebila as MPs. First, I want to congratulate my friend and brother, Cletus Apula Voka, for serving his people so well over the years. He's been my colleague in parliament. We work together, both in government and in opposition. And I know the caliber of person he is. When it came to issues of the law in parliament, they were the ones who stood in front. We gave way to them because they were the best legal minds we had. And Cletus will always take you through a very concise analysis of what he wants to posit. And it made it very enjoyable to listen to him on matters of the law. Not everybody knows when it is time to call it quits. And so one mark of respect that will forever remain ingrained in the minds of the people of Zebila is that a time came when he said, look, it is enough. Let me hand over to the next generation. And so I want to congratulate you. Thank you. But I want to assure you that his service for the NDC party and the NDC government when we come is not over yet. So you must... So he must continue to prepare himself for service. Now, like I said, all these people here qualify to go to parliament. And so if we could send seven people to parliament, we would have sent all of them. But the law allows us to select only one and send only one. Now, when we have selected that one, it doesn't mean we don't like the other six. We like them, but just because the law says we can take only one, we have to select one. And so I want especially to advise our supporters that it is like when your family has the opportunity to occupy a skin, a chieftaincy skin, all members of the family qualify. And so you all go and struggle to be the one to be chosen. But as soon as you choose one of them, the rest of the family all rallies around that person. This contest is a contest within a family. Our real opponents are the MPP, not ourselves. And so it, once we finish that process of selecting who, electing who it is, let us all come together and support that person. It's always said that God's time is the best. It might be somebody's turn today, and it will be your turn tomorrow. So the support that we give the one who is elected today is the same support we will get when our opportunity comes in the future. And I also say it's not a matter of life and death. If your party is in power, there are many opportunities open, not only as MP, there are DC. So many positions to occupy. And so if one is selected, it doesn't mean the others have been rejected. We will find a place to deploy them when we come into government. But my most important advice to, is to the supporters. Often when we have finished a process like this, those who followed the winning candidate, when the others want to come back and support that candidate, we often tell them that, no, you end up, you end up supported this one. You are not part of us. You are not part of us. We are all NDC. We are all part of it. 
So as soon as we finish, let everybody come on board. And whoever wins must be gracious in victory and extend a hand to everybody, notwithstanding whether they supported you or not. So that's the issue with the parliamentary. After that, we have the presidential. And that is where I get involved. Zebila promised me in 2019 that they'll give me 90 point something percent of the vote. And truly, when we voted, I got 90 point something percent. So I want to thank you very much for that confidence you reposed in me. And to thank Chairman and my brother Cletus and Regional Chairman for the new endorsement that you have given me. In the last vote, we didn't get 99.9% .9 or 100% because they were rejected ballots. And so I just wanted to use this to demonstrate to people how to vote. The point is, when you get a ballot paper, it will be like this. There were four of us who filed and paid the filing fee. But one of us withdrew and uh, threw his support behind me. And so, and so it's left with three. And so when you thumb print, try and thumb print into the middle of the box. You should thumb print in the middle of the box. Don't thumb print close to this line, because once the thumb print crosses the line, they will say that the vote is spoiled. Then apart from that, after you have thumb printed, don't touch the paper. Get a tissue or a handkerchief or a rag and clean your hand properly so that the ink is dry. The reason you should do this is, if you don't do that and the ink is still wet, and then you touch the paper again to try and fold it, your thumb print will touch another place. And once they see two thumb prints, then it means your vote is rejected. And so let's make sure that we don't have rejected ballots so that the 100% we've talked about, we can achieve it. And so, now we must talk about Ghana. Our country is in reverse gear. We are going from Zebila to Accra. And instead of going towards Accra, the bus is reversing towards Kulungungu and outside Ghana. <laughs> hey, Zou. The president who said we should try him in 2016, Try me, try me, try me. And our fault as Ghanaians is that we decided to try him because they said NDC was incompetent, NDC couldn't run the country. And so we handed over the country to him. All of us can see what has happened. When NDC was in power, if for nothing at all, I can beat my chest and say that our lives were better under NDC than they are today. Things were going well, development was going on, we were extending power to many communities, we were providing clean drinking water, we were building roads, we were building hospitals and health facilities, we were building schools, like trying to expand secondary education with community day schools, e-blocks, and then we are also building facilities in the existing secondary schools, dormitory blocks, administration blocks, lecture rooms, uh, dining halls, and so on and so forth. And our colleagues said we were incompetent and so Ghanaians should vote us out. And that when they come, within one and a half years, they'll transform Ghana. And that they were going to give one million dollars per constituency per year. And that means that by now, Zebila constituency should have had about six million dollars in your account. And in a proverb, mostly with their accounts, they say, if you can't find something for your in-law, at least don't steal your in-law's thing. And so you promised us $1 million a year. You've not given it. We haven't seen the $1 million. The little district assemblies common fund that we've been using to do chips compounds and small, small development in our constituencies, that one too is not coming. You've kept it. You know, and so things have change for the, uh, for the West, the free SHS, it's not working well. And when we give them ideas as to how to improve it, they don't want to take it. 
As I bring all the parents and the teachers and everybody together, the students, and let us think about how we can improve the free SHS. And then they do propaganda with it and say, I said, I'm going to come and abolish it. We are going to come and make free SHS better. As soon as we come, we are going to tackle all the abandoned school projects so that we can increase capacity in secondary school. Because we want, by the time we leave office, that every secondary school child, all our children, will go to school at the same time, and then they will vacate and come home at the same time. We want our children to go to school and spend two months to three months in school not go for four weeks and come back because of some traffic light system. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to improve the feeding for the secondary school students. They've adopted a centralized feeding system. And it's not working. Because there are times when the food does not arrive, and so the children don't have food to eat. In the past, we used to give the money to the schools, and they procured their own food. And so we're going to reintroduce that so that they can procure their own food and give the children better food than they are giving now. If we go to the senior high schools and see the kind of food the children are eating, it's very poor. And so we're going to come and improve that. Our national health insurance, we don't talk at all. It is simply not working. And that is because government is not refunding the uh, claims of the hospital facilities after they have treated national health insurance holders. In our time, you could go with your national health insurance card, you'll be looked after, you go to the dispensary, they'll give you cough mixture, they'll give you paracetamol, they'll give you antibiotics. Today, if you go to hospital, after they look after you, you won't get even paracetamol. You have to go and buy from the drugstore. So NDC is going to come and restore the national health insurance. Make sure that the tax that we collect, the levy, goes to the purpose for which it is to be used. What this government has done is they've capped the national health insurance. And so when the money comes, they take some of it. And then the rest to release it, they won't release it. For the last one year or so, they've not released any money to the national health insurance. And so we don't know what kind of government this is. Our economy is in a poor state. They were borrowing at an excessive rate. We drew their attention to it. They asked us to shut up. And that's because the finance minister is the cousin of the president. And because he makes a commission on every dollar he borrows for Ghana. When he goes and brings a loan, his bank, data bank, are the ones who are the brokers. And they get a commission for bringing the loan. So if you have a situation like that, are you surprised that we can't pay our debts because of excessive borrowing? 80 of their MPs signed the petition and asked the president to remove this finance minister because he's incompetent. Up to today, he's the one managing our finances, taking pensioners' monies, refusing to pay bondholders. It's not fair. And that's why Ghanaians say NDC should come back. And that's why I am certain, by the grace of God, inshallah, that NDC is going to win the 2024 election. And we must learn a lesson from the hardship we're going through. In future, if somebody comes and says, try me again, just tell the person to get out of here. <laughs> we don't need try me, try me again. We need experienced hands. They said, MPP, we have the men, we have the men, not knowing some area boys, you know. Where are the men? You know, NDC has the human resource to run this country. Pound for pound, if you compare NDC ministers and their outputs to what we have seen under this MPP administration, they are no match at all, no challenger. So Ghanaians are asking us to come back and take the country. And you can tell that the opportunity has opened up. The EIU recently published their outlook um, uh, for the 2024 election and they predicted that NDC will win the election. There is an organization that
constantly prints, you know, predictions and outlooks for different countries. And in 2012, they predicted NDC will win. In 2016, they predicted NDC will lose. In 2020, they predicted M MPP will win. And now they predicted that NDC will win in 2024. And so far, their predictions have proved accurate. But the reason why they say NDC will win is because of economic turbulence that is taking place and poor governance. We should note that they said uh, economic uh, mismanagement and poor governance. And so the verdict is out there. And so Ghanaians say, NDC, come for your stone. And we know that when somebody comes to your house with a stone and say, get your stone, it means that you advise them and they didn't listen. And now they see that the advice you gave them was true. And so, come for your stone, NDC. 2016, we lost the election. All of us were sad, because after all the work we had done, we didn't expect that we would lose. But our colleagues demonized us so much that Ghanaians decided to give them a try. And I believe that it's fortuitous that God did that. Because if we had won in 2016, Whatever we do, Ghanaians would not have appreciated it. Because of the big promises these guys made, Ghanaians would have said, if it was the MPP, they would do better than that. And that's why God made us stand down. And let them also come and try, so that Ghanaians can see what their competence is. Today, we all have seen. In Akan language, they say we've carried water, we've carried alcohol, and we've seen which one is heavier. So now all of us have seen what they are capable of. In 2020, we went to contest again. And again, the hand of God, he made us stand aside. We didn't get power. And we're sad about it. But when I look back, God was saving NDC from something. He knew that they had dug a big hole in the economy. Some of us knew it, but the bulk of Ghanaians did not know that there was a big hole in the economy. And so God said, NDC, stand aside. Let those who dug their hole fall into the hole. And today they've fallen deep into the hole. Now they're on the knees going around the whole world begging people to forgive us our debts. This is one of the lowest Ghana has sunk. First in history that we have defaulted on paying our debts. And yet when they were borrowing and we're telling them, they refused to listen. But that is for them. We all live in this country. We know what the situation is. And so let's talk about ourselves. Ghanaians are expecting us to rescue them. And I'm saying that 2024 will be a different election because it is not going to be led by the flag bearer. It is not going to be led by the national executive. It's not going to be led by the regional executive. It's not going to be led by the constituency executive. It is going to be led by you, the branch executives. You are, going, you are going to lead and we are going to follow. And then whatever support you need to do that campaign, we are going to make sure we provide it for you. Yes. Hey, yes, so you've promised me 100%. Yes. I'm also promising you that the logistics and resources you need to do that campaign, whether it's t-shirts, it's posters, it's money, it's bicycles, it's motorcycles, it's vehicles, This, this, is, this is why they call old soldier never die. <laughs> so whatever logistics you need for that campaign, it is my responsibility to look for it. And this time, I want us to avoid that situation where our party grassroots, the branch executives, complain that when the resources come, they are left out because they don't get it. Because I've gone to several constituencies, I've gone to several constituencies, and I see my nine-member branch executives, and none of them is in a t-shirt. Meanwhile, we ordered hundreds of thousands of t-shirts. And so when you ask, why, why, don't, didn't you get some of the t-shirts? They said, not even one. And so 
the way we're going to adopt to make sure that these things reach you is that we know we have 275 constituencies. We know how many branches we have in every constituency. And so we're going to load the logistics for every constituency. And we're not stopping in Bulga. When we load it in Accra, it's coming straight here to Zebila. It's coming straight here to Zebila. And when it arrives, we are going to take three of you from each branch, the chairman, the secretary, the women's organizer. And then when you arrive, we will then open it. We're not going to open it till you get here. Then when you arrive, we'll open it. All of us will count how many t-shirts, how much money is there, how many bicycles, how many motorcycles, how many... How many posters? And then after we have counted, we will sit and share the logistics. And then everybody will take theirs back to their branch. And then you go and share it with the rest of your branch executives. That is the way we can guarantee that our branch executives also get their fair share of whatever logistics we bring for the campaign. Because indeed, if I give you the responsibility of leading the campaign, I must give you the logistics to be able to do that. They say elections are won or lost at the polling station. And in each of your branches, there's a polling station. There's a ballot box. And so we're putting that ballot box in your care. Make sure you have eagle eyes on that box. The electoral process has changed. And so when we come to select party agents, make sure that you give us people who are, uh, um, what do they call it, literate in numeracy. And so they can do addition and subtraction. They can write in figures and in words. Those are the kinds of people we want, so that they are able to do the job for us. We will train them so that they know that, for instance, when you come to vote, you put your hand on the biometric machine, and then it confirms that, yes, you are a voter there. If you're, it doesn't recognize your thumbprint, but your name is there, they normally will verify you manually. Now, at the end of the poll, the number of people who were verified by the machine must be the same number as the ballots in the box. The last election, of, a lot of our people didn't check that. It must be the same number of ballots in the box. If there are more ballot papers in the box than the number of people who were uh, verified on the biometric machine, then it means that somebody has put extra ballots in there. And then what it means is that you must check all the serial numbers against the booklets to make sure that they come from that particular uh, polling station. But we'll give you the training in all that. And then we also have a reward system. Any constituency that compiles all its results, collects its results, gets all its pink sheets by 12 midnight on 7th December 2024, by 12 midnight, any constituency that finishes counting its results, gets all its pink sheets, the constituency executives are going to get a handsome reward. But the branch executives are not left out. Every branch, too, that achieves the target votes that we're going to ask you to attain and exceeds it, and then also counts your results and gets your pink sheets on time. All the nine member executives in that constituency, in that branch, are also going to receive a handsome reward. This is meant to encourage you to be able to do the election properly so that victory will be ours. In addition, we are bringing the party school to you. We have a party school, and people have been going for lectures and graduating. So instead of going to the head office, to the party school, we're going to bring the party school to you. So before we hold the election in 2024, they're going to go to every constituency, and they'll call you the way you've come for a few hours. They'll teach you the history of the NDC. They'll teach you the founding fathers of the NDC, what motivated them. They'll teach you the ideology of the NDC, social democracy, what does it mean? We all say we are social democrats. What does social democracy mean? They'll teach you campaign tactics, how to campaign. They'll teach you the role of the position you hold. If you are chairman, what is your role? 
so that you don't go and take your secretary's job and start doing it. <laughs> and then they'll teach the secretary to, so that he doesn't go and take the youth organizer's job and start doing it. But the beautiful thing is, once they finish, then you become a graduate of the NDC party school. And so you get a beautiful certificate with your name on it. And then you can frame it and go and put it in your living room. The good thing is that tomorrow, if anybody questions your legitimacy as an NDC member, you tell them with that certificate that I'm not only an NDC member, I'm a graduate of the NDC party school. And then, just uh, almost coming to the conclusion, I've said that in the past, for those who were involved in the revolution, Cletus and all the uh, old folk, we had a sense of sacrifice for the rest of Ghana. And so if there was any good thing, we made other Ghanaians take it first before we served our cadres. The same ideology came into our party. And so anytime there was something, we said, oh, let the others benefit before we take our turn. As an MP, I remember we, they used to bring small loans for women. And we'll often ask our women's organizers to stay aside, let us serve the other women so that we can convince them to come to the party before we serve our women's organizers. And by the time we finish, the, the money is finished, so our women's organizers don't get I said, we're going to change that mindset. We're coming for the benefit of our grassroots. So if there's anything, if there's anything that is being shared in Ghana that is good for Ghanaians, it's also good for our branch executives. So if we're sharing small loans, our women's organizers also deserve to collect some of those small loans. If we're giving scholarships, our young people, we have children, they also deserve some of those scholarships. If we're recruiting into the army, police, immigration, fire service, prisons, whatever, our young people to deserve to be recruited into those services. And so you're going to get your fair share of whatever is good for Ghanaians. We're not going to ask you to wait until other people have gone before you go. And so that's what we're going to do. And then when we come into office, that place, eh? You like that place. <laughs> I say when we are recruiting into the public services, cocoa board, whatever, uh, uh, police, immigration, we will make sure that our young people also get their fair share. Hey, so, aside from that, and this is almost final, when we come, we're going to concentrate on finishing abandoned and ongoing projects. All our projects that they abandoned, we are going to take them and finish them. But in addition, there's that they are doing that are ongoing and they don't finish before they leave office. We are going to take those ones too and continue them. Because the money that is invested in this is taxpayers' money. The ones that we're doing when I was in government, it wasn't my money from my pocket. The ones they are doing is not money from Akufuado's pocket. It's money that was taken from Ghanaians. And it's a shame to let those projects go to waste like that. So we're not going to be in a hurry to start new projects. We will take stock of all the old projects. And then we'll put our little money into finishing them before we look at new projects. But finally, in addition to that, we believe that one of the things that can raise Ghana's economy again is to let as many Ghanaians own small businesses. And so when we come, we're going to have a scheme where Ghanaians can own their own enterprises. And so for instance, if we come and our women's organizer says she wants to bake bread, we will help her with the oven, the flour, and all the things that she needs to bake bread. So that she will bake her bread, and then she will buy the flour and continue running her bakery business. If you want to do poultry, guinea fowls, chicken, we will help you with the chicken houses. We will bring the small chickens in there or the small guinea fowl chicks. And then you can sell the eggs. When they finish laying, you can sell the guinea fowls themselves and make money. It is only that way with micro enterprise that we can help our people. We'll bring tractors so that those who want to farm, we can plow for them. We can harrow for them, give them good seeds. 
And so, what mama can do? <laughs> As you, you remember that in the previous NDC government, we were giving mama can do on high purchase. So we'll restore that high purchase scheme for mama can do and also for Okada motorbikes. So let me let the, bring my lecture to an end here to thank you for the promise of 100%. And let's remember that we should vote properly so that we don't have any rejected ballots. And all of us are going into this together. I've said that by God's grace, NDC is going to win. And if it wins, by God's grace, I become president. Once every year, in order that we solve that problem of, oh, after we elected him, we didn't see him again. Of course, there are 40,000 branches, so it's difficult to be seen in 40,000 branches. But the solution that I have come up with is that as president, once every year, the way we've gathered here like this, I will come to Zebula constituency. We will gather. We will gather and we'll brief you on what government is doing for you. And then at the same time, the best thing is that we'll also give you the opportunity to tell us the challenges that are affecting you so that all of us can be on the same wavelength. So thank you very much. May God take everybody safely back home.